Premier Media's Polity, Amlum Gilen Gomve. Joining me today is author and academic Professor Sviston Lovu, here to discuss the book ANC Today Letters, The Ideas and Thoughts of President Thabo Mbeki, Volume 1. The book is a collection of letters written by the former president Thabo Mbeki during his tenure as president of South Africa and between 2001 and 2004. Can you highlight the central messages that President Mbeki conveys in these letters? This is the first volume of the book. He writes these letters not as the president of the country, but the president of the ANC. I think the main idea for him was for the people of South Africa to know and apprise themselves in terms of what the ANC was doing in terms of governing the country has to be out there in the public. So he decided to establish this communication platform. It didn't miss a day from 2001 to 2007 in terms of every Friday this messaging has to be out regardless of whatever the newspapers or the TV stations of the day were saying. Ironically, it seems as if those platforms actually waited for Fridays. <laughs> Remember before, there was a position that we are not taken seriously by these platforms. And the news about you are skewed. But now suddenly, when you start this venture, the very same platforms, which were so negative, and they made it a point that they interfere with your messaging, changing to suit themselves. And suddenly, when they realize that your voice is out there officially, they're now waiting for you so that the weekend newspapers spend their time now fighting against you now, giving you the space and reinterpreting whatever you were saying. Before they had the field day, they could twist messages because you were quiet, but now you are the main newsmaker, <laughs> you know, you occupy the space, you know. They give you the time and space that you had wanted. It doesn't matter now whether you agree or you disagree with them because they have a right to disagree with you, technically speaking. This is a democracy. Prior to the ANC entering this space, yes, black people did have their own media, which dates back to the 19th century. And in most cases, some of the media was based in missionary schools or in churches. Then, if you think about the history of colonization. But let me say to you, when the ANC was formed in 1912, part of the executive and the leadership, there were three main characters there who owned newspapers. One, John Langa Libalele Tube, founded the newspaper which you might know called Ilanga La Senatal, published in Isizu. And it, we are quite aware that it still exists today, but it's now owned by Inkata Freedom Party. But it exists since 1903. And it was founded by who? The first president of the ANC, John Lamalibalele Tube, and who was also in the room. It was Pixley Isaka, Ka Isaka Seme. In 1912, he founded an ANC newspaper, which was called Abantu Batu. That newspaper was reserved for the ANC to talk about the movement itself and whatever was happening throughout the world. Much like 
what you call this ANC today, even though it's an electronic newspaper. But Semi established an ANC newspaper, which was very popular. The third one is Sol Black. He founded a newspaper around 1902-1903, which was called Kuranta Yabatswana. So in this room, you are forming this organization. You have those three prominent members. The other one is the Secretary General, that is Black. The other one is the President, that is Tube. The other one is the founder, that is Seme. So that is why I was saying to you, before you even understand the history behind the formation of this electronic version of the newspaper of the ANC, you might know that you have to learn about the fact that blacks really were in the space in terms of the media. And prior to those, if you remember any course, there was Info Zabansund. If it, that was formed before 1900, it was formed during the late 19th century. And it succeeded, I think, I think it only closed down before 1994, I think, but it was always there. So, to a large extent, media was really crucial to the black people themselves. Yes, it was about that, occupying the media space, because the media was, they perceived the media as generally anti governing party. So that's why it was set up. In noting the history of the relationship that the ANC had with the media in South Africa and around the world, what were the key factors that led to the increase in the global appeal in terms of the, maybe particularly the weekly ANC Today publication? If you think about it, you know, there's something that we take for granted with, uh, as South Africans that we have to familiarize ourselves with. Remember, the ANC had four pillars of the struggle, but I tend to say it's five pillars, you know. So it was underground, it was above the ground, you know, it was international solidarity. Okay. It was military struggle, where MK is. I tend to say, I argue that the fifth one was culture. But the one on international solidarity, on solidarity, was the one that might make it possible for me to answer you, that our struggle for national liberation was international because of that. So if you remember very well, people went to exile. In, they were different countries in the world, in the Soviet Union, in Western Europe, in the Americas, you know. So internationally, your struggle is known. And we had various worldwide anti-apartheid movements, you know, all over the world. Can you imagine in any place you can talk about in the world, you wouldn't get constant news from the country's president informing you in terms of the decisions that he takes and informs you every week, every Friday. So I think that's why that was the interest international because it was easy to access. And you can plan against what South Africa is doing or you can support what South Africa is doing because the policies are now discussed in an open platform, which is that electronic newspaper. Please remind our readers about the types of challenges that Mbeki faced during his tenure as the former president of South Africa. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm not President Mbeki himself, <laughs> but when I read the book, when I read the book, one, 
A, I think the poverty and the fact that the majority of South African people are poor really affects his thinking processes. I think what he's trying to say to us is we are not free. What we've achieved is political freedom because the issue of racism also worries him. So he's simply saying that the struggle is not yet over. We have to attain economic freedom. So it seems as if the ANC, in terms of what they decided as the ANC, then even going to exile, they promised us that they will attain both political and economic freedom as black people. His argument is that we need to now embark on the economic struggle in order to deal with these issues in terms of we're still yet not free in terms of the economic struggle and also in terms of issues of racism and class. We're still not yet free because those who control the economy are, doesn't matter whether they are white or black, are still ruling us. And the other issues then that worry, that worry him are internal, you know, it's corruption and the fact that the ANC is dysfunctional as an organization. And also for him, it was a new tendency that the corruption is from within. It's from within the movement. He's not blaming any other people. It is taking full responsibility of that. It's like, it's like a counter-revolution from within. People are starting now to ingratiate themselves within the ANC and, 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 and are corrupt. They are tenderpreneurs or fight for political positions within the party because they want to enmesh themselves into whatever structures are there so that they get money for themselves, you know, using corrupt measures. So going against the constitution of the movement itself. So, so that was an issue for themselves. Also, another issue also was the fact that women are not free. The youth also are very important, and children also, because if you read some of his letters, that we can do better. So now he's surprised that instead of them working hard to make it a point that there is equity, his ANC colleagues are pocketing the money <laughs> in terms of building the schools in the, <laughs> in the township. So now we have the seeds of the so-called construction mafia now coming, <laughs> coming into the fore. So you can't build a school in the township without now that people shall share is now interpreted <laughs> differently. <laughs> People who are not part of the solution want their share of the construction money and they call themselves ANC members. So those are the issues that he has to try and address by being vocal about the plight of the children themselves. And also he says that the youth should also play a constructive role in making it a point that we don't repeat such mistakes, you know. I think he was driven by that because the ANC Youth League had lost its bearing. If you compare it to the ANC Youth League of Mandela, Tambo, and, and others, you know, you see that it's, it's, it's day and night. You know, it's day and night. This one is not grounded, the new one is not grounded in terms of making it a point that you know, they are being constructive in terms of building our country. They are there for themselves, you know, so, so those are the issues that he was talking about. Can you maybe tell us more about the African intellectual tradition that President <clears throat> Mbeki writes about in his letters? And it's important in terms of political activism. 
And then how far do you think the ANC today is from reclaiming this? You see, the problem is, as black people in this country, we are told that we cannot think, we cannot produce knowledge, we are not intellectuals. So white people belong to a chosen race in the world. Actually, most of the theories forwarded by white missionaries and colonizers and them, it's, it's, it's the knowledge that is produced by us when they arrive here and come into contact with us. But then what happened? They intervene and change it to what makes sense to them and claim that all the knowledge that they have originates from them. Now, in terms of us as Africans, in terms of the oral traditions in our own African languages, you can find so much wisdom and philosophy and history that you can trace them back to a particular time. And in terms of whatever the missionaries, the stories that they tell, it's not their stories originally, it's the stories that they take from our people and, 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 and reform and, and, and claim that this is their stories. So if in the present you are a black person, they tell you that you've never invented anything, don't believe it. Because, because for the fact that you survived for so many centuries without the need or guidance of the so-called Western people, colonizers or Christians or missionaries, it's enough proof that you could deal with your environment the way you wanted to. And that's why you're still in the majority anyway, unlike in Latin America, where then you're decimated, not only by the gun, you're also decimated by the diseases that they bring with them in their ships. So that's why I'm saying that you then have to have intellectual traditions, why they call intellectual traditions in their language surviving in order to explain your humanity and your being and which you don't define in Western terms. You know, you don't divide. You define it according to your beliefs and and tradition. So so to a large extent I even think we're the ones who have to understand more about them rather than us forcing them to become westernized. We are westernized, okay, that is fine. But we just have to make it a point that we do understand that there was a time in our space where we didn't even need any western people to be part of us. Focusing on today, or well, today's sort of iteration of public affairs, there, it's quite evident that there is a regression taking place within the ANC. How crucial is it for the party to bolster its rhetorical skills in order to make a difference? It simply means that most of the members of the ANC don't know anything about its history, including the fact that they still have to go back and claim that intellectual space and also in terms of culture, also they still have to go back and claim that, 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 that space, you know. They all think, and there's so much, there's so many traditions that they have destroyed. So the NC therefore has to go back to its basic core teachings that it's not a train smudge, but you can go back to that. 
to that core fundamentals, principles of the organization. And you don't have to be vulgar and violent about it, you know, because you did attain them up until these elections. So if you want majority rule, which defines the constitution of the country, you know what to do. And also, if you form governments of national unity, alliances, that might be a way forward in terms of rebuilding yourself, probably. We argued that in 2007-8, Begi did note that the ANC will die if we don't sort it out. And that was not done. So it simply means that it, that still remains a fact. If they don't sort themselves out, they will die a natural death. So they are busy redefining that. But as you're saying, as we are saying, they just have to go back to their to their roots. And 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 luckily we hope that will still remain. Because I do believe that if we're in any other countries, whether in African continent or Asia or whatever, there would have been a coup after they lost the majority rule. But it didn't happen. But let's, uh, let us not rest on our laurels, you know, because I don't think, if I read this book, I don't think President, former President Mbeki will support that position because that section on promoting peace throughout the continent and the world is crucial in the sense that in most of the countries that you went to, there were coups. The ANC has to make it a point that in terms of its core values, it returns back to this and we don't have any military coups, you know, just because the ANC is now losing ground. What would you like the younger generation of South Africans to take away from the book? I think, I think the, the most important question about the younger generation is for them to, to read and read and read and read and read. Because I think the new platforms, the media, it's easy for them to get lost in that world. And they have to read more about their past and have to read more about these core values, you know. As I was making this example that, you know, the constitution is important. You don't overthrow it through a coup. And as I said, if we claim to be a member of the ANC and we are doing exactly that, you do know that in terms of its original values, that's unacceptable. Just as to accept a defeat. And I think they've done that. So I think therefore the younger generation should not take those issues, those things for granted. And secondly, issue about race, race matters. You know, if the younger generation stand up against those whether it's happening in schools and wherever. For me, that's, a, that's positive. Because I said in terms of the ANC, one of its value was to fight for a non-racial democratic South Africa. They also have to understand that what we've given them is just political freedom. They mustn't rest. <laughs> they must fight for economic freedom. Economic freedom is going to be difficult now, as it was difficult with the political freedom. For me, I never thought that I would see the political freedom, any form of freedom in my lifetime. I always thought that it was going to be the future generation. So that I saw the political struggle happening in my lifetime. Therefore, it means that anything is possible for our kids. They just have to stop spending their time with cell phones and all that, internet and whatever. 
they just have to start organizing themselves in terms of how are they going to attain economic freedom. Otherwise, they'll keep on complaining and complaining. It's for themselves to do it for themselves. So for us, we, we've laid the ground and the platform. So they have to start now being serious. That was Professor Sfisonjo discussing the book ANC Today Letters, Ideas and Thoughts of President Thabo Mbeki, Volume 1.